for those of you who don't know us, um, Trellis is a charity that supports therapeutic gardening in Scotland. We have over 480 gardening projects which affiliate themselves to our network. And we provide information, training and good practice sharing across the, the network. And we aim to promote the highest quality of gardening services and enable everyone to get the best out of them. So you can find links to all our resources online on the Trellis homepage. So the session today is approximately 60 minutes long. We're going to have a presentation from Ruth Ney, who delights in bringing art to the garden, and she's going to be talking about printing with plants. We're then going to be followed by a Q&A session, so we'd be delighted if you could put any of your questions into our chat, and one of the Trellis team that's joined today, she's going to be voicing the questions to Ruth um, after the presentation session. So it's a real privilege today to welcome our speaker, Ruth May. Ruth's gone very shy now, so she, she's actually doing uh -huh. her video, but I'm just, going to, I'm just going to highlight her because she's going to share her screen with us in a few minutes. So if you just hold on a second and I will, um, I'm just going to pin her so that we can see her. <laughs> Is gonna do it? Here we go. Here's Ruth. And, um, Ruth has a long history of making art and uh, working with people and lately gardening with others and always trying to find ways to include making art alongside the business of growing plants. So planting gardens and growing plants and making art uh, seem really creatively compatible. So Ruth is interested in drawing and painting and printmaking and in particular drawing and being outside. And she's currently working at the Forfar Open Garden in Angus. So that's where you can find her when she's not here doing this. <laughs> so I'll pass you over to Ruth now, who is going to share her screen and her presentation. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah. That's lovely, it's just coming through now. Oh, wonderful. I'll make you go. Feel smaller. That's it. So, so, yeah, thanks, Jenny. Thanks for that. Um, I have always been interested in, in plants and printmaking and um, started to do it again when we were in the garden. And one of the volunteers said that she'd made some gel plates and did we want to have a go with them? Um, so one day we, we went outside and instead of putting things in the compost heap, we started printing with them. Um, I asked her where you could get the gel plates and she says, oh, you can make them or you can buy them. They're quite expensive to buy though. So that was the start for me of um, my journey into to playing about with plants and printmaking with, um, with plants using really simple methods that I want to share with you today because really anybody could do it. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. Okay, so move on to the next slide. Okay, um, so so a little bit about the printmaking process to, to start with. Um, so it really is printmaking at its simplest. Um, if, if if you've ever brushed against the door and got and got something your fingerprint printed on paint, that's printmaking. And um, the printmaking that we're going to talk about here is kind of we're making monotypes and monoprinting. Um, now mono just means just one, and you get one pressing. You get kind of one chance to to make an image that you you cannot repeat, even if you wanted to. Um, you could, you couldn't do the same thing again. So it's just like a moment in time, and it's pairing ink through a material and leaving an impression and image of the object or material that you're printing from. Um, so let's move a little bit kind of further on. So that's the indirectness of it is quite important because it feels almost like there's something 
in between you so you don't really need to kind of worry about drawing or how good it's going to be or how good it's going to look to other people there's just kind of you the ink the flower or plant that you're printing with and time and a chance to do something so here's a print of a monoprint and I hope you'll be able to see this is the first one that I did when I was playing about kind of looking at looking at how to how to sort of tell you all about it and I printed something um, a common vegetable it's um you can probably you can probably guess what it is if, if I've printed it well enough but I was there's always a thrill of kind of um pulling back the plate and seeing what you've printed from um, so the the piece underneath is um, a monoprinting plate. Now I'd hoped to do this session a whole year ago and I'd made the plates for it then. So my plates had been stored not very well over the winter and had kind of probably disintegrated a little bit. They were in sort of the, the, the kind of damp and so this is an, an ideal print to, plate, to print from, but I thought I'd show you it because it's, it's just interesting that you can, still, you can still print from it. So gel plates. Gel plates are a print pressed by hand and that they allow marks made so you could draw into it, you could draw into it with your finger, you could ink up a plate with some ink um, and you could draw with your finger um, and print just that mark or you could place an object onto it and, and print that. Um, and they print without a lot of pressure so you don't have to be strong to do printing. Um, almost the act of touch and putting it on something is enough to make a mark. So you don't need a press, there's nothing to carry. All you need is the pressure of your hand um, or, or a, a baron. So I'll talk a little bit more about kind of barons in a, a little little while. Um, so it's a, a great way for using in workshops um, because there's always a surprise element of like, nobody knows what they're going to get and it's really accessible. So today we're, all, we're going to look at printing with just one colour and there's a reason for that. The reason being it's kind of at its simplest and most direct. You don't have to decide colours, you know, think about what you're wearing um, in a day. You don't have to decide what outfit kind of you're going to use and what you're going to match with what. If you're printing with one colour, it's sometimes good to limit the choices. So I, I, cho I choose to print with just kind of black at the moment. So the materials that you're going to need, um, I'm going to speak about them, how to make the plates, how to ink up the plates, using plants as stencils, um, inking up the plants and registering the plates. Okay, so let's, let's go. Before I start that, I kind of want to talk about kind of um, artists that you, this is a simple method, but it's, it's really something that lots of artists have used. Artists have got excited about the possibilities of plants for years um, and an artist, a surrealist artist called Max Ernst used to use collage and printmaking techniques in his paintings as a launch pad for his own creativity and into um, the unconscious that working with images that you can't create yourself is a really exciting process and it often kind of starts kind of another process happening um, that is creative, although it's creative enough just in itself. And um, one of my favourite artists um, is Joan Eardley. And Joan Eardley, um, she, she was, she would be so excited when she was painting the summer fields at Catterline that, that once she, she actually kind of threw the kind of like the grasses that she was painting into the painting. And you can actually see the grasses still in the painting. So she, if Joan Eardley got excited by printing with plants, then I think we're all in, in good company. She was a wonderful artist. So the grass itself becomes not only a representation of itself, it's using the subject to be the representation. And for me, there's something magical about using natural materials to, to not stand in for themselves, but actually almost to conjure themselves back up. So I, I hope that you'll kind of enjoy this sort of process and it'll encourage you to, to kind of really connect with the natural world and ways that isn't just about growing plants, but using plant material to be creative. Okay, um, so this is, a, this is a painting by Max Ernst. What Max Ernst used to do is he used to like 
push things like petals into the oil paint and actually remove them carefully um, and he would kind of reveal marks so he used it to actually print onto his paintings okay so i wanted to say that kind of it's a process that we're looking at that's involved kind of using your hands um, and there's just a a lovely physical process about making mark and traces that that kind of involves um like the cave paintings it's just you being here at one point in time um, so lots of things that you can use you can get really excited about all the papers that you can get but i would say at first don't worry about any of it um, you um we do use a special ink um, and and that kind of that ink that we use is um a water-based relief ink we could use an oil-based ink but we would have to do a lot of cleaning up with oil um and with a water-based relief ink you can even wa wash the plants and compost them at the end of it so what, you, what you're aiming for when you use this ink, and I'll tell you where to get all these inks, um, is you need a, an even coverage. And um, so you're, you're using a roller to kind of ink up a plate. Now a plate can just be a shelf, a shelf from the fridge. Um, it could be a glass chopping board, anything to roll, roll out, um, out your ink onto. So you can you can print on neutral coloured paper, and that kind of gives you a sort of different background and changes entirely what your image is going to look like. So there's lots of like really exciting art, artists' papers that you can get, or you can just pick up a brown paper envelope, a seed packet, or um, just an old bit of brown paper. Anything will do. Old bits of wallpaper as long as they're thin enough. Um, so don't worry about need an expensive materials with sleep your hand which is a lovely kind of feeling of it it's kind of almost like kneading bread but you kind of like my technique is going around in circles and you kind of try it just now and just put your hand on a surface and a bit of paper and kind of press you'll feel that the heel of your hand kind of quite naturally makes a kind of flat surface you can use things that you've got in your kitchen drawers you can use a rolling pin um just wanted to say that kind of making marks is just such an innately human thing to do and using plant materials to make marks offers us a range of mark making possibilities that, that we couldn't draw, draw these so the picture here is some rose petals that um, i was printing um, both with and from and um, because i would ink up the rose petals once they were stuck in the ink um, and you know, put the paper back back over over them. And what really surprised me is that I could actually pick up textures of kind of the rose that I actually couldn't see with my physical eye. And um, so it starts a whole kind of um, a whole kind of trying to look closer at plant material that you kind of although you work with them every day, you do start to take them for granted. And there's something kind of remarkable about peeling apart a rose to kind of look at the structure to look at where the seeds are, but also to look at like what you might actually want to print from. Okay, so going to look at as well the kind of how you register your plates. So when I'm kind of registering my plates, that just means um, how I'm going to how I'm going to make sure that the marks go where I want them to. So I put a piece of paper the same size as the one that I'm going to be printing from under a sheet of glass. And that's really helpful because if you have to, if you get excited and you have to kind of let print, um, it's a register for you. So that's an important thing, thing to do. Don't worry about remembering all this. You can you can see it all on kind of YouTube videos of people printing. Um, and I, I'm really happy to kind of help people with the process. Um, so it's like having a sandwich. You've got a piece of paper which is kept clean and it's just used as a kind of lot, almost a landing pad for your for your kind of print um, your paper's face down there's a gel plate and a registration plate but like but like so um, so I put the white paper under the inking plate to show you you don't need very much ink so I've got my ink hope I've got a picture of but it's just the kind of rollers that you got at school and they're kind of like hard plastic ones I'll skip that just now and you roll out out the ink 
Okay, so you need some plant material to print with, don't you? So, um, plant material that you can use, um, you can use leaves, um, and you generally, I start by kind of making a, you can print simple stencils, which will give you this white outline that I have here. What I've done here is I've kind of printed it, got the stencil, then I've picked up the leaves and I've actually put the ink on the leaves. And then I've done a second pressing, putting the, the leaves back on top of the print plate and pressing the paper on top and then peeling it, peeling it off. Um, this, this image here is kind of, you know, try, trying to show you, um, this is the print and this is the, the actual surface that I printed from. So the paper goes on top, I use a barren, um, which is the bit that you saw, saw in the first, the very first slide, it's a kind of hard plastic um, tool that you kind of, it has a handle which allows you to kind of um, make a, an even pressure um, across the surface of the plate. Okay, so some some more images here um, of kind of what you what you can achieve. Um, sometimes you you come up with something that really really surprises you. Actually, get a bit of a fluency for knowing how much ink to remove and what what will make a kind of good mark. Um, it's, if you're after perfection, you kind of you don't get perfection with it, and what you do get, I think, is something kind of that's kind of more towards poetry than perfection. And so this is a kind of close up of the image, and you can kind of see that you are seeing all the kind of parts of the flower and the veins on the leaves and the stalk. Um, it's also something really satisfying about kind of being able to kind of crush the plant material underneath because it. As I said, it is a physical process and you actually hear that when you're rubbing the surface, the kind of the, the plant is pressing itself into your gel plate. Um, okay, so here's another, another um, sort of quite heavily inked top plate. Um, and a lot of these images that you're seeing is, is just diff different pressings of the same, the same flower. Um, it almost becomes quite quick and quite exciting. Um, but don't be worried if you don't get amazing images at first because just keep taking ink off the plate and you, you often get something that will really kind of surprise you. And, and it's just about learning, not how I print, but how you print. Okay. Um, also, don't be frightened to use man-made kind of objects as well. This is just a, um, I printed this plate first with some wallpaper kind of from behind, as a, you know, to just give a, a textural kind of image and then printed leaves over the top of it. This is, this is a stage in a kind of print that I kind of went on to do some more of. And that's the kind of, the second stage, but then with a piece of paper taken off the, the plate again after all that was was down so you you do surprise you could probably I'll ask you at the end of any name um any of the the kind of plant material that I've kind of been using okay so we have a minute to to look at that um having said that you you have things have to be able to be relatively flat um to be able to print Okay, so here's a picture of like how exciting it all gets. So you need to kind of take a, a bit of time to, to have somewhere to stack all your prints to keep them clean. Um, but your materials, the, the ink can be kind of like cleaned up with something as basic as water and sugar soap as well. It's a good idea to have a few plates on the go so, so you can do a lot of prints at once. Okay. So. So we're talking about gel plates. So we go on to talk about. Okay, so there there are kind of many kind of different recipes for it. Basically, they either use kind of gelatine or seaweed powder recipe. Um, so gelatine obviously comes from animals, and um, and you can kind of choose which which one to to use so you can get all this information kind of on on the internet um, I'm, I've got photos of the process further on but I thought to go back to show you and um, this is the tool that I've been using so these cost kind of like no more than I think maybe sort of six to eight pounds and um, so this is a simple plastic sort of barren 
that probably originally would have been made from bone or um, you know just something that could be made very flat it's a very hard piece of plastic and it's wrapped in um, bamboo and when you buy them you get a lovely little tiny bottle of camellia oil as well to um, and an extra couple of skins with them so you can send away from these and they're very very cheap and one will last a long time okay so um the other ones are kind of more kind of um it has lots of kind of little marks almost like a sort of like a dog brush or something that's got like tiny little plastic um sort of feelers almost that kind of and that's kind of useful if you're just but this definitely has been my kind of tool of choice for getting into small crevices okay and picture of the kind of inking up the, the leaves and things and um, so you'd want plant material that's not going to fall apart when you're inking it up having said that it's really surprising how um how you can use quite fragile plant material so i i went and got lots of dried leaves and my my kind of motto was really if I, can, if I can get it in my print from it. Okay, another wee picture of the ink and it goes really far and you don't need very much. Um, talking about kind of how exciting it is, sometimes you get a particular plant that you want to tear apart and, and print with. Um, and I thought I'd show you some of my mistakes. So I. Um, I hauled apart an artichoke and thought this would be wonderful and I loved all these shapes and spent a long time kind of clearing up after it as well, you know, because you want to be able to remove the printed material from the plate quite easily. You don't want it to stick because it will stop you in your tracks. So don't use anything that's kind of, that's going to fall apart too, too, too much unless, unless you want it to, um, because it, it kind of goes in the ink and you have to do a lot of cleaning. Here we are with like, you ink up onto any glass surface using a fridge shelf, as I said. If you didn't have that, you could actually put down something like a bit of tin foil and tape it at the edges. Um, if it was a strong tin foil, you can kind of ink up off of that. Or I have used in the past just kind of kitchen worktops or tabletops or these um, oil cloths that you get um, anywhere that you can roll out a bit of ink. That's kind of all you're, all you're needing to do. So back to talking about papers. Um, the papers sh um, ideally should be kind of around 150 grams in, in weight, um, but thin photocopying paper is ideal if you want, if you're doing a workshop and you want to do lots of it. Um, the thinner cartridge paper also works really well as well. Um, because it's a physical process, the paper ideally should be strong enough to take a bit of a bashing. Um, lots of lovely papers. Um, I got really involved in like looking at lots of lovely Japanese papers and um, sending for samples um, is a lovely thing to do because you get them for nothing. Um, just flick past this one, just saying they can be just a point of departure as well as an object in themselves. So what you're looking for when you're collecting plants, so you're looking for plants with texture, plants with linear elements, Strong plants you can crush, dried leaves work fine. And yeah, just a bit about the robustness. So you can print with petals, leaves, and even thistles. And again, you can pr print things that you can't even see. I think I've talked a little bit about trial and error and um, don't expect to do something fantastic at first. You might, um, but, but don't feel that it's not going to work because then um, I think killing kind of everybody does. You, you will throw out more than you save and just enjoy the process of getting to know your materials. I um, thought I'd show you these ones. So this is this is the first print. And then this is the second print taken off the spine um, and have more kind of um, more atmosphere than the first print. So they're called ghost prints. Um, here's a um, talking again about printing being a great way of using plants, create an image that doesn't involve drawing. You can draw with soft cranes as well. So I could have written, I could have drawn on that text, but remember to go backwards if you want anything to be legible. And when it works, it really works. Let's talk about making the plates now. So you kind of gather together biscuit trays of plastic food containers 
any internally smooth surface container, you'll need a kitchen workshop to put your plates on when the containers on to receive the gel. Um, some new plant labels or some di different thicknesses of card. And if you have a spirit level, use it. Um, so here's a kind of quick flick at the recipe. Again, don't, don't worry if, um, don't try and write this down because Jenny, Jenny has all the kind of links to the internet and you can get all of this from the internet. Um, but it's basically glycerine, cold water, um, powdered gelatine. You can buy all these kind of things from Boots, but it's expensive. So I found it was better to send away for them. Um, you can also make it with seaweed and you can again buy kind of veggie gel um, just from the from Tesco's for doing it, or you can get it in bigger amounts at the Chinese supermarket. So here we go to the photo bit. So I took photos of kind of making the seaweed ones yesterday. And this is this is how I did it. I won't read it for you because you can let you read it yourself. Basically, cold water and salt. So the difference between gelatine and seaweed plates, but you'll find that out yourself. If you wanted them to be kind of more permanent, you could ask, ask add some alcohol, which means that you can't boil them down to reuse. So it's not so economical and they smell horrid. So once you've dissolved the salt in the water, you add the 50 grams of agar. You then heat the mixture on a medium heat um, and you use a whisk if you have one or just fork it gently, but you have to be by the heater, by the, the stove while you're, while you're doing this. It begins to become a bit thicker and a bit more transparent. It almost changes from a kind of yellowish kind of sort of a clearer colour. It didn't, mine didn't become transparent. Then at this stage, you add 225 mils of glycerine. Now this mixture is enough to make kind of like maybe four small plates or two large ones. Again, pour it quite Pour it into your chosen container. Better to use a shallow one of Pyrex dishes and everything work as well folds for gel plates. So you kind of feel the inside of the container rather than look at them. Um, and it'll pick up small marks. Like if you've if somebody's kind of cut a cut a cake in your in your biscuit tin, you can tell where they've been with a knife. Um, so ideally you're aiming for a thickness of around a center, centimetre, but it could be slightly thicker for larger ones for handling them. You can even make a giant one and cut shapes out. So just experiment and enjoy it. Um, you could even try to cast plants or small objects by sticking them to the bottom of a mould and try to make a relief print to print from. I haven't tried that, but, but you could. So yeah, so you, you're gently pouring and the idea of gently pouring is you're trying not to get any bubbles in your plate. Now, this is well nigh impossible, but um, that's where the newspaper kind of comes in. You're checking its level with spirit level, and you can prop little bits of cardboard paper or plant labels were wonderful underneath. And then all you have to do is wait. So the seaweed one only took 10 minutes to, um, to set. So you're, you're nearly there. Yep, check for bubbles. Um, and re remove them. So removing the plate, you can do it just by kind of running a plant label just around, you don't even need to run it around the edge. All you need to do is get it, get it coming away at one corner um, and turn it over and they kind of, they, they come outside down. So then you want to wrap in greaseproof paper or hooks that um, all the materials for the presentation last year came in. So I didn't open it until this year. Um, and these are, these are, this is a seaweed plate that um, it's best to wrap them in cling film. Again, talking about mistakes, if you wrap them in paper, it sticks to it. So something that's not going to stick to the plate as the glycerin kind of maybe dries out a little bit. So then I think this last bit is kind of like over to you really to think about how might you use gel printmaking in your work with plants and people? Um, 
lots of people have done lovely things like there's sort of printmaking exchanges between people and projects you could you could um it could be a diary you could bind them to make a book or you could get lots of people doing them together at the same time or a different time to um, frame a whole wall of them as a an almost a kind of impromptu herbarium so so thank you for that and um, i'd love to hear your ideas and i'm happy to help with, with any of it and thank you thank you very much ruth okay that's lovely Thank you. We're going to come back. Just going to remove the spotlight, and I'm going to ask if there's any questions for you there. I'm sure there must be many. Yes, we do have Jenny and Ruth. Ruth, that was really interesting. Thanks very much. I just loved how it was like the whole the surprise element of it. Just floats my boat immediately. And the fact that you say um, you'll never achieve perfection is perfect as well. Um, you're always going to achieve by perfection, not expecting perfection. So, um, right, first question, I think was maybe answered towards the end of your presentation, but I'll ask it again, just for clarification. Uh, Jane would like to know, why is it called a gel plate? Ah, um because it's, I think it's just because it's made of gelatin. Um, it's, yeah, it's just made of, it's just because it's made of gelatin. So it does have the sort of texture of kind of jelly before you put the water into it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, great, thank you. Jenny is obviously already getting her material pulled together because she's on to choosing plants. Um, Jenny would like to know, how long do the prints take to dry and can they be pegged up to dry like you'd see in old-fashioned photography or will they run? No, no, it's a kind of, the amount of ink that kind of comes off is kind of minimal. So they take kind of like maybe to be fully dry, probably about half an hour. If you used an oil-based ink, which you can do, they would take probably overnight to dry. Um, so using water-based speeds all that up. And you can, you can peg them up to dry, but it's probably better to just have lots and lots of kind of surface. And they're actually okay kind of just stacked on top of each other for a little while. There's not that much ink, but it depends. It depends how kind of clean you want to be about the process because you've been kind of, you, you can also kind of like keep your hands um, sort of free of ink and, you know, maybe, um, cut corners of envelopes to pick your prints up when kind of have a clean area to work in seems to be the best thing to do. But um, th yeah. Okay, that's great, thank you. Jenny would also like to know, what plants would you recommend to start off with? Okay, I would, I would maybe kind of start with um, like individual leaves. Um, are, are really really good kind of like um, if you can if you feel it, it's not always the front of the leaf that you want to print sometimes print in the back sometimes there's more textures to pick up off on the back so I would I would say something that had kind of clear edges something that interests you you know I, I think there's like if you went for a walk you would probably find sort of like 10 20 things that might make good prints um, but and also if you get more than one one kind of leaf play about with kind of the pattern and just putting them down and um, because you will have an eye for for how things go together yeah practice making perfect for imperfection brilliant love it jane would like to know does the plant material you choose have to be completely dry before you start pressing with it no 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 it it, it, it doesn't have to be completely dry and um, not at all you, there's nothing special that you need to do I mean you would probably if it was if it had been raining outside maybe dry it between tissue paper but but no um no it doesn't have to be completely dry no great okay and can you use perspex instead of glass um, you can, yeah, absolutely. Um, you might even get quite excited sort of during the process and try and print from the, the plate itself. And that's quite a good thing to do if you kind of ink up a plate because you'll see the difference between what you can get from the gel. Um, so I think somebody's put up um, in, in the questions um, why they're kind of 
what yeah you're not you're not printing off the kind of that the glass surface that I used was just to pick the ink up off of and get an even coating on the roller. So once you've done that, what you're doing is you're kind of coating the, the gel plate, you're transferring the ink from the glass plate to the gel plate, and it's the gel plate that's going to pick up the, the, the texture of the plant. So the gel plate, you would stick either underneath the plant, and you can do it both ways, or on top of the plant. So your gel plate is just used to pink, pick up ink off the, off the surface or to lay the plant material on top of and then the paper on top of that and then you rub through the paper and that kind of that prints the the print that you're going to get okay i think um that probably clarifies a couple of the last few questions that have came up there um a couple have asked is there a video that yeah. you would recommend to see this in action yeah definitely um, and i'm sorry my ability is not good enough to to re record your video because i think it's really important to see it being done there are and i've put the links in in the the thing that i sent to to jenny but there's um there's a cup there's a couple of people um that there's a youtube video and i forgot the name for now but i'll i'll, I'll try to remember it but if, if you look up just youtube videos of gel printing there's there's loads of them great okay we will do that thank you um an interesting question from sue are you able to print onto materials such as cotton or silk yes you would be able to print with silk but it would be if you wanted to keep it for a scarf or something it's a different ink that you would use um, so there's also kind of people that have done lots of kind of nice stuff about, about that. I think there's a lady called Jenny Dyer um, that does eco printing with fabric. Um, so, so yes, yeah, you can. The process is absolutely the same, but you would probably use a different kind of ink, one especially for fabrics. Okay. I guess you don't want it running in the rain, don't you? Not giving it rains the whole time in Scotland. Okay, back to Jenny. She's on to making her ghost prints now. She would like a little bit more explanation on how to actually achieve the ghost prints. Okay, so ghost prints, ghost prints are a print from a print officially. That's what a ghost print is. So what so you would, you would take your print and while it's still wet, you would put a clean piece of paper over the top of it and then you would use the baron to um, pick your, picking up your print off another print and that's why it's called a ghost print. I'm not sure that that's what I did with my print. I think what I, what I did was I um, printed and then used a second piece of paper to take off the play the image that was left so I, I'm almost taking a kind of secondary image but a proper ghost print is where you're printing from a print so you're printing while the print is still wet okay yeah understand that thank you Joe would like to know how long does a gel plate keep for before you use it for its first use and how long does it last in between uses and how many uses do you get from the one gel plate? Yeah, they're, br they're all brilliant questions. Um, so how long, how long does it last before you use it? You should probably use it within about six months, I would think. They're not permanent and they're kind of made of materials that do degrade. If you keep it wrapped in grease, grease proof paper um, in a in a kind of cool place it'll keep for longer. Having said that, I kept mine in my shed, which got frost and they, they, they don't cope with that. It's not necessary to keep them in the fridge at all. And it's, I made, I made some and I made them in these little bamboo dishes and put the lid on. That also wasn't a good idea because it did let mold into it. So they need to breathe. Um, they need to be stored somewhere cool. They need to not have frost. Um, so the second part of that question was it how is, many uses? Yeah, how long does, can you, well, you can keep it for up to six months and then once you start using it, I take it you've kind of calculated that into the six months and how many uses do you get from okay. the one so, so the answer to that is it depends how harsh you are with it and it depends how hard that you try and put the materials 
into it as well. If, you, if you're really, really gentle with them, um, they'll keep for longer. Also, the seaweed ones seem to be a little bit harder um, and seem to, um, I think they might be sort of like slightly more robust than the gelatine ones, but the gelatine ones, you get lovely marks and it's kind of a really nice tactile thing to feel. So I think it, it really depends how carefully you handle them. I'd say you probably, I've, I've had kind of two uses out of all of mine, um, but I am kind of getting to the point that I just cut them up um, and use the old plates to make new ones. I cut them up like jelly jelly cubes and go to the stove and do it on a medium heat again and just then um, re, um, remold them again. So that kind of that process kind of takes about sort of 10, 15 minutes to to kind of to do. So basically make them the night before. The gelatine ones benefit from being cured in the fridge as well for about four hours. Okay. So when you're re remelt when you're melting your old gel plate i'll call yep. it you melt that down and you just kind of go through the same stirring process leveling it all out yeah and how many uses how many times could you re reset a gel plate i i think it starts to get a wee bit dirty i've only done it twice and and the print, prints i print, printed the ones that i showed you from um I'd, they were kind of second castings of it. So I think you'd probably get three or four, um, but, but really the materials are kind of quite cheap. But if you don't want to do all that, you can buy permanent gel plates from, an, from a printmaker supplier that, you, that will last forever. All right, okay. Yeah, they're yeah. just slightly different. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, um, you've answered a couple of other questions just in your answers to other ones. And the video, oh, Anne would like to know, what are the disadvantages of acrylic paint? Don't use acrylic paint um, because you'll ruin your gel plates. Um, you need to use printer's ink. You can, you can use acrylic paint if you don't have anything else, but it dries too quickly. And it, because it doesn't roll out, you won't get it to the same thin, um, thin texture and viscosity that you need to print with it needs to be almost like a a really really fine layer and you can never get acrylic paint to 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 do that um so so really it's worth investing the kind of i think it costs like maybe sort of eight pounds for for a good printer sink um, a water-based relief ink and you'll get much better results if you if you have that and it takes three days to come through the post so it's kind of really good it's a good investment Okay, fabulous. And I think that you'll be pleased to know, I think that's the last of the questions that's came up so far, but there are loads of um, words of um, enjoyment. Oh, thank you. As well, full of how they're already starting to think, how they can use it in their garden environment and um, working with different client groups. And somebody's heard that a large Ferrero Rocher tree makes a good gel vessel. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, just lots of um, appreciation for sharing your experience and instilling and inspiring people to have a go at it. So well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jane. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks. Jenny? That's terrific. Thank you very much indeed, Ruth. There's uh, loads of comments coming up now. Right? People are away to uh, start sending off for their, their seaweed. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> they're, they're going to be they're going to be very busy at the kitchen table yeah. or even, and uh, emptying the fridge to get those fridge shelves I think <laughs> get them out that's brilliant thank you very much Ruth and please show your appreciation to Ruth if you hover over your reactions button we can uh, give her a round of applause that's absolutely terrific Aww. thank you very much everybody that's lovely and um, I just thank want you. to say <laughs> I just want to say another thank you to everyone who's made a donation to Trellis today. And uh, if you have enjoyed today's session, you know, please consider making a donation um, to support this kind of work. Um, we'd, love, we'd love to do more of this in the future. So um, you may also be interested in our plastic free gardening book, which is on offer this week. So don't miss out on that if you're looking for a gift for someone uh, or you want to treat yourself. Um, it's on offer at 10 pounds this week and there's a discount code um, that's going to be in the chat if you want to follow the link there. So it, um, it's 
now time to bring this session to a close. So thank you very much for all your participation and thanks once again to Ruth because that was absolutely terrific and I think we're all inspired to get cracking with that. Um, and so we'll just say bye for now and uh, hopefully see you at another session this week, everybody. Bye now. Bye. bye.